Hey, Odie Tuggers. This is Kevin McGinley, your K-Scope 20 conference chair, and welcome to our podcast uh, that we're starting here for K-Scope 20 to kind of talk a little bit about the, you know, designs and behind the scenes planning of, of K-Scope 20, give you maybe a little bit of insight into how we plan the conference and who are the people that are part of that planning process. Um, and, and ultimately just try to, you know, make you feel inclusive about all the things that are happening behind the scenes with regards to things that we decide to do for K-Scope 20 and, and new features that we try to bring or some changes that we're going to make to, to how the, the normal K-Scope experience might be. Um, and so I hope to do one of these uh, podcast episodes roughly once a month, might be a little bit more uh, depending on, on availability. Um, but each time I'll hopefully bring on a special guest or multiple special guests, depending on, uh, you know, where I'm at and uh, who's available and, and what topics we have to talk about. And I'm excited today to have Chris Barbieri with me. Uh, how you doing, Chris? Hey, Kevin. Good to hang out with you. Yeah. I mean, what, what better way to spend uh, a weeknight? You know, just talking about K-Scope and Oditug, fun times, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I raise my virtual beer to you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, yeah, I have, yes. Unfortunately, I, I have tea right now because I have a little bit of a cold, which is not the best time yeah. to start one of these things, but uh, that's okay. I, I'm raising my tea to you. We'll, we'll <laughs> talk about tea a little bit later, I think. Um, so, so Chris is uh, one of the content chairs on our conference committee. Why don't you just give a little bit of a blurb about your, your role, Chris? Uh, so, Kevin, um, thanks. Uh, I, I'm really excited to be on the, on the conference committee this year. This will be my second year on the committee itself. Uh, I, my own background, uh, I've worked in the EPM space for, gosh, 21, 22 years, something like that. Uh, and I, I think about 11 years ago, I got involved in uh, Kaleidoscope, what we called it back then, and thought it was a really, really great conference. Uh, I was there as a speaker, and I looked around me and, and had such a great time, I volunteered. Uh, so the following year was my, my first year volunteering. This would be 10 years for me, I guess. So uh, what, what was your first case code? D.C., Washington, D.C. 2010. Okay. So, so mine was was Long Beach, which was 2011. So you, you got me beat by one year. <laughs> I loved Long Beach. I mean, DC was fantastic. It, and I have to say, for me, when we were at Long Beach, and uh, the conference itself is, is always a lot of fun. You, you learn a lot. But I think what set it apart, because I've been going to conferences, whether as a speaker or an attendee for many years before that, and I remember when we when we got off the bus at the special event, we had the Queen Mary. Yeah. And it, you know, hundreds of people, more than a thousand people are getting off that. And you had the entire uh, conference committee at that time saluting and shaking hands with every single person that came on. And they were all dressed up like um, in the tuxedos and gowns. I, I was I was blown away, you know. And yeah. That, that special event, I think, goes down in the, uh, you know, sort of uh, annals of K-Scope uh, history of, as one of the most iconic special events. Um, I mean, I know lots of people have their favorites and whatnot, but that one was so unique and, and different. It, it definitely resonated with me, that's for sure. The comedian and the rock band that we had out on the on the upper deck and the stern of the Queen Mary. And, and then yeah. ending the night with young MC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just priceless. Yes. Uh, so, so you, that was your first year volunteering. Yeah. Yeah. And were, were you a, um, were you on like a selection committee? Yeah. Uh, yeah I, was, I, was too. I was a team member for whatever we called financial close back then, you know, the products have evolved and the conferences evolved so much. Uh, so every year you're sort of reinventing it a little bit, but yeah, 
then I and then got, did you become a track lead at some point? Yep, uh, that was pretty interesting because if you think about it, um, when you're on the team itself, you're part of a group that reviews all of the all of the um, abstracts. You talk as a team dedicated to each track. You talk as a team and you decide, well, what are the things that we think we'd like to cover? What do we think is important? What do we think that what's happening in, in the market? What do we think that people want to hear? And what's different about this conference than other conferences? So you're part of that decision making group. And then uh, the lead is the one who rallies everyone and, and coordinates the calls and kind of uh, is the decision like a tiebreaker, I guess. And right, the final <laughs> decider, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I did, I was on the team for uh, several years and then uh, eventually I became the track lead um, and then handed that off uh, to uh, Julian Kudred and uh, then Jordan Drummond, I guess we'll be uh, working on it this year and uh, now you know, last year I was I moved on up to the conference committee. Yep. And, yep. Yeah, you realize it's it is work. It's a lot of fun being on the on the team and then being the track lead. You're responsible for the the sessions and the imagination, everything that goes into that. Um, but being on the conference committee, it's you're putting on the conference. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a whole other level, right? Yeah, and content is huge. I mean, it's really, it's one of the main reasons why people come, but, you know, in a little while we can talk about some of the other things that as the conference committee we're, we're involved in. And I, I'm so excited and really flexes my imagination to be on the team. Yeah, I was, I was really, um, you know, I've, I've been a track lead a couple times uh, before getting on the conference committee and you know, you, when you're a track lead, um, when you're on the selection committee or, or a track lead, you know, you're sort of focused on your your sort of microcosm of, of case scope. Um, you know, there's a bigger picture out there, but you're so focused on, you know, your sessions and, and the need of your track. Um, and uh, it, it was really eye opening to, to get to the conference committee level and see all the extra things that go on to, to, to plan case scope. And, you know, I think one of the things that hopefully will be cool about this this podcast series is we'll give people a little bit of insight into that a little bit. You know, I always uh, I kind of got the inspiration for this from like kind of watching behind the scenes documentaries of, of like movies and TV shows and things like that. And, and so I thought, well, you know, hey, wouldn't wouldn't that be cool to kind of, you know, lift up the cover, so to speak, and show, uh, you know, what some of the planning is like. You know, Kevin, I mean, you asked me a moment ago when my first K-Scope conference was. The first K-Scope conference was probably, I don't know, it was probably 2012 or 13. But in 2010, it was Kaleidoscope. Right, yes. And, and you know, I think the first Kaleidoscope that I went to, it was the first time, I think they were trying to evolve the content because I, I my background was in financial consolidation, financial close. Uh, and I think before that it was a um, whole bunch, it was a uh, S space, I guess, from the Hyperion world. Uh, and then you had the other um, technologies. Do you know the, the history of like before? Yeah. I mean, I, I know some of the people that have been around Odie Tug, you know, since before the, the Hyperion acquisition, uh, you know, by Oracle. So Oracle acquired Hyperion, I believe in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. And, yeah. uh, you know, there was, uh, obviously a big Hyperion, uh, you know, sort of passion and following and Hyperion put on, you know, really great user conferences, uh, from what I hear. And, um, you know, prior to that, the, the OD Tug was, you know, sort of more round development tools and, and uh, you know, some of the more sort of traditional Oracle technologies, um, you know, and in fact, you'll, you'll still hear uh, people kind of refer to, you know, some of those tracks as the traditional side, if you will. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so when, you know, when the EPM uh, focus came for, for K-Scope or Kaleidoscope at the time, it was 
really about sort of that audience finding a home and, and uh, you know, Odie Tug welcomed them with open arms. It was, it was great. Uh, and I think that Odie Tug set the stage for a, a home that the Hyperion people wanted. And that is, um, you know, I always look back at uh, some of the conferences and I, I think about um, open world and K-scope and, and how they're different. Uh, I think I said this on the video for K-scope 19 last year that um, I always look at open world as a place where you can go and you can, it's an awareness. You get to see what all the different Oracle products are. You get to talk with other people who are using them. It's more big picture. There's there are definitely a lot of case studies and that sort of thing. But if you're somebody who really just wants to sit down and and use the technology, what's that next feature? How can I how can I get something more advanced out of this? How do I code better? How do I make this run faster? For me, there's there's a mechanic in my heart. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. I, I, I remember really, that that metaphor you used with the car show versus the kind of learning how to get under the hood. Exactly. I want to have, I want to have the, uh, I want to have the hood open and I want to be inside and I want to be modifying this thing and making it run faster and, you know, replacing the transmission, that sort of thing. And I think that K scope for me has provided me that kind of a home. Yeah. And I, it, it, it's, it's that spirit that I think was first established by, um, the other developer tools and today it's it's the it's the apex group i guess the application express group um and then the database i've met so many database developers over the year and yeah. though our paths don't always uh we don't always walk the same tracks um in terms of the, the products that we work on i think there's this kindred spirit absolutely so let's let's uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about Kscope 19 because you know, like you said, this is your second. This is going to be your second year in the conference committee. Um, so you got to have the full experience of what it's like to plan a Kscope end to end and then see how it turns out, which to me is kind of the cool part. It's like when you finally get there and all the things you've been talking about, you kind of get to see them unfold and and happen. So what, what are your sort of reflections on Kscope 19 having gone through that, that whole process? In fact, you could almost, since, since we had Kscope in 19 in Seattle and we had Kscope, what, 14 in Seattle, I think it was as well. Um, you know, you could almost reflect on those two experiences a little differently because the first time you weren't part of the conference committee and the second time you were. So what, what how do you look back on Kscope 19? <laughs> It's true. Uh, it's true that it, it's very different when you're when you're part of the when you're part of the committee and you're you're walking around and making sure that we take care of every every everything that the uh, pe the attendees are are happy that they're they're getting a lot out of it. I take a lot of notes while I'm at K Scope uh, in terms of what feedback we get and we talk about that afterwards. So uh, during the conference itself. Um, I'm uh, listening uh, as a as the conference committee person. I'm listening yeah. to people and making sure that everything goes well. Uh, whether it's the hands-on labs, the sessions, I tend to poke my head into a lot of the sessions just to see how is this going. You know, what's the what's the response from uh, the different people, so that when we ask presenters to come back, at least I have some personal. Um, experience with that but i think the content is just part of it um each every year when we have the conferences and seattle was no exception uh this year i flew in extra early so that i could attend the um the special event on not the special event what's the kathleen mccoslin event called that's the saturday charity event our community service day yep that's it uh and that's pretty cool. It's, I'd say it's a small group, but it was like 60 or 70 people, something like that. Yep. Kept, yeah, we had a good crowd this year, for sure. I love that at K-Scope, we kick this off with a, with a community service event every year the, in the town or the city that we're in. So we start off on the, on the right foot, and then we shift yeah. to the symposium. And 
And, and, it, and it's interesting, a little sort of behind the scenes uh, tidbit here. We, uh, you know, all those notes that you mentioned taking, you know, we, we actually have a, a Slack channel. So, so for part of our, uh, to help our planning process out, we use Slack so that all the committee members can talk to each other. You know, we, we, we have weekly calls or bi-weekly calls and, and, you know, sometimes we get to talk live, but other times we have to discuss items, you know, over a uh, virtual medium and, and Slack is what we use. So we actually have a, uh, a dedicated Slack channel where all of us can write notes during the conference of things that we're seeing, things that we're hearing, um, you know, to, to kind of uh, pay attention to um, when we kind of debrief. Um, so that's a little bit of a, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to see all the little tidbits that people are dropping in there as they're going through, uh, you know, oh, I heard this, so this room needed that, or we got to make sure we do this next year. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of cool to have all that chatter and activity going on during the conference. I also, as I'm talking with people, you can see a lot of people who are just so happy to be there. And here and there, you meet people who want to get involved. It's, it's that same um, emotion, the same attitude that I had back in 2010. I'm having such a great time. This is one of the greatest conferences I've been to. How can I get involved? And I, I will meet those people and I'll, you know, take their contact information and sure enough, we follow up and we start planning this. Gosh, what, what was our first meeting in July or August? Like a August, very, yeah, we usually are, August. are planning session kicks off in august uh we take the month of july off usually um and, and we get started in august every year yeah it's it is uh it's a year-long commitment uh the conference doesn't just sort of happen there's no there's no such thing as an all-nighter um <laughs> i i have to give credit to uh the the organization that um really puts on the conference for us and, and guides us through the, the people from YCC. Uh, yeah, they're great. I would be lost without them and, and they keep the cadence for us. Uh, they advise us and, they, and they've been with us for such a long time. It's kind of a quiet backbone of the entire conference. Yeah. And, and actually because this is now, you know, something that Odie Tug has done year after year after year, we actually have a nice, uh, a nice schedule that we follow every year. Now, obviously the dates change and the, and the deadlines of some things shift and move, but we actually have a planning schedule that we follow every year. Um, and a lot of those things are, are pretty uh, typical uh, location of location. There are sometimes some location specific things that we have to do differently, or we may as a group decide to do things at different timings than we normally do. Um, I know we've uh, over the years played with the opening and closing of abstracts, uh, those dates. We've uh, played around with those a little bit to try to make sure we align to other things that are happening in the world and, and don't overwhelm people with too much stuff at one time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, YCC helps us with that planning process uh, to, to make sure that we're staying on track and doing all the things that we need to do. So. That's kind of a perfect lead into what we've done so far, Chris. So we, we've already started K-Scope 20 planning, as, as you alluded. We started back in, in August. Um, and what were we doing then? We were reviewing some of the, the conference evals and session evals, looking at all the feedback. Were yeah. there some things that you took away from that? Yeah, th there's always – there's a um... – one of the one of the challenges that we have, which is which is great, is trying to figure out how to pack enough content in, how to give people some time to actually um, socialize, to, to just hang out with each other. Um, we offer the hands-on labs <laughs> where we have the we, the other sessions. We've got the Sunday symposium, so it is a juggling act every year to try to figure out how much content to deliver. How much can people really take at any one time? Uh, so I think I think each year we sit down and we look back and say, okay, you know, here's here's how many how many sessions, and maybe we change the order of this. And uh, I think that that's a recurring theme. 
Yeah, one one of the things I can definitely say, having been on the committee for several years now, is is that we do consistently see feedback from people around, you know, how many great sessions they want to go to, and there's multiple sessions at the same time, and they can't be in more than one place at once, and that's always a struggle for for lots of uh, attendees, just because there are so many. You know, so many uh, great, great sessions out there and only so much time in the day and we can't clone ourselves in, in multiple places at once. So that that's definitely something that uh, we get. We definitely get a lot of feedback on. We have I mean, th there's also the balance between consistency. If you right. think some of the tracks that we have every year, we know we know we're going to have application express. I mean, that's a really big that's a really big track in terms of the attendees and the excitement around K-Scope. Yep. Uh, and of course, the big data, data I think the name has evolved a little bit over the years. Um, the name for what? The big, big data and data warehousing. Yeah, so we, we, yes, we've evolved that. We'll actually talk a little bit more about that as we kind of get into some of our K-Scope 20 stuff. But, um, but yeah, we'll, 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 we've made some changes in that area and, and we'll get to that here in a moment. Um, but uh, you know, yeah. there's always that balance, yeah. Last year, uh, so last year, and I think the year before, well, at least last year, we had uh, emerge, some emerging technologies. Some, yes. I want to say experimental, but some things that are really traditional. How, how did that come about? Yeah, that was, so last year, we we've officially made that a track. Uh, the year before, we had dabbled in a little blockchain, um, and and that was the sort of board's way of trying to branch off in new directions. And what we decided to do last year for K-Scope 19, and we're continuing for K-Scope 20, is this idea of a track that's sort of dedicated to what are some kind of hot topics that, that are of interest to attendees, uh, you know, from a, a technology perspective. Um, but don't necessarily warrant a track of themselves, or at least not yet. Um, and I, I think this is, you can think of it as almost like a little bit of an incubator. Let's see where there's interest and attention and where those, uh, you know, capabilities and technologies grow within, uh, you know, the user community. Uh, and, you know, maybe one day they'll they'll be significant enough to kind of warrant their own track. But for now, we're, we've kind of coupled them into emerging tech and, we're happy we get to bring that back again this year. So we'll definitely have that at K-Scope 20. Some other things that we've been doing is, uh, you know, we've settled on all of the track names and we'll, we'll make some comments about that in a second, as well as our track leads. We've also been brainstorming some, some new session ideas. Um, you know, some of this is coming out of the feedback that we got, but it also, Chris, it's from conversations that you've had with, with people about, you know, speakers having desires to do things a little differently. Um, you know, what what are some of the things that you've heard and that we that we're definitely considering? Well, I, I think in terms of the session types, uh, last year, um, and I this was uh, Opal Alipat, and and hats off to her. Uh, what a lady! She she encouraged us to stretch and, and to think beyond just the normal hour-long sessions. Um, of course, several years ago, we started with the deep dive sessions on Thursday, and yep. that was one of the first times that I think, other than hands-on lab, that we broke out of the 60-minute mold. Yep. Well, last year we, we tried some 30-minute uh, sessions, uh, and that was great because that gave us some flexibility to offer topics that were, were interesting, but probably wouldn't warrant an entire 60 minutes. Um, and that got me thinking this year that that was successful. I think we got a lot of good feedback for that, that we should do some more of that. And while we're at it, uh, there are some topics that we should, that we could go into more detail. And that gave me the idea that maybe we should do a 90 minute. And while we're at it, you know, in terms of breaking out of the 60 minute mold, if we offered people the option to suggest a 30, 60 or 90 minute session, um, that would give people some more, more flexibility, some more imagination room. Uh, 
and along with that, I think we, um, we, well, we talked about doing, uh, asking people to present maybe workshops. Um, and that is to come up with these ideas, to think beyond just the 60 minute um, PowerPoint presentation and find other ways to engage users. So I'm really excited about this. I've gotten a lot of good feedback from this. I'm really thrilled that uh, the conference team was on board for this. And I'm yeah. seeing how this uh, unfolds in the in the coming months. Yeah, so let's let's talk about workshops a little bit because that's that's a little bit different. Um, you know that you you definitely mentioned the session duration and and that will definitely be a, a change for people. You know when you're submitting your abstract, you can say, hey, I, I could give this in 30 minutes. I could also give it in 60 or 90, and and you get to pick. Uh, you know what you think your you know presentation could could be, but the workshops a little different. Um, so what we what we did there is. We wanted to kind of expand a little bit of the hands-on capability of of Kscope. Um, you know, as Chris has mentioned, we have the hands-on labs, um, but not you know we don't have room to do hands-on labs all day every day. You know, and everybody just spend their time in hands-on labs. Not to mention the hands-on labs are are pretty. Uh, you know, there are a lot of work to put together and and put on. So we kind of thought of this middle ground, if you will, where you know, if, if I'm a presenter and, and Chris, I'm from the analytics space, so I'm going to use an example from analytics of, you know, hey, maybe I'm doing a session on data visuals, you know, Oracle data visualization, and I want to actually give people the opportunity during the session to follow along with me as I build something or modify something within data visualization desktop. So if, if you have a laptop and you have data visualization desktop installed and, and hopefully we'll provide you with that kind of prereq info on the on the session notes, but uh, you could download my file that I give you maybe a URL for um, and get the data set in the workbook that I'm working with and you could follow along and, and do that development with me while I'm leading the session. Um, so that's that's kind of the idea behind the workshop. It's not a full hands-on lab, and the participation part is optional. Um, but that's kind of what we have in mind for the workshop, and we hope that sort of opens up interesting ideas that people might have to do more than what you said, do more than just a PowerPoint presentation. That should be really cool. And to, to, to let go of the idea of PowerPoint, and I, for one, <laughs> presented using PowerPoint for a long time, so I'm yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be scratching my head a little bit and trying to come up with some ideas for myself. Uh, and I'm I'm excited. I'm looking forward to seeing how people embrace these uh, these new ideas. Yeah, and and to be clear, right? You know, if if delivering a PowerPoint session is your thing, there's nothing wrong with that, right? We wanted to provide the opportunity for presenters to kind of stretch their creative muscles a little bit. And if they wanted to kind of go outside the box a little bit, we, we would have a more of a structured way to do that. And, and I think this will this will be cool. I'm really excited to see how this pans out. Some other things that we're doing this year um, from a track standpoint. So so as we alluded to earlier, we're, we're kind of bundling um, all of the BI content, big data content, um, and data warehousing content all under one umbrella called analytics. So we have one analytics track that will have multiple sort of subcategories uh, going on with it and, and that will encompass kind of everything that we know of from a, a Oracle Business Intelligence, which is now Oracle Analytics, um, as well as all of the sort of data engineering and data platforms that, that go behind uh, that, that product set. Um, and to that end, we've taken EPM reporting, um, which used to be by itself, and, and then we kind of bundled it in with Oracle BI when, when those two things became a little bit more convergent. Um, but we're going to put EPM reporting back in the uh, EPM community. Um, and, and I think that'll be an opportunity to focus on some of the cloud offerings from Oracle in that space. And um, you know, make, make sure that it has its due in that regard. In it is addition, as, as Oracle, oh, sorry, ahead, as Oracle no. continues to release and develop new products and, and they're blurring the lines between what we traditionally had, it's, it, it's the response that we have to 
that we it's what we have to react to each year yeah. is yeah. with other ways and following Oracle's advice on how to redefine some of these things. So uh, who knows what reporting will be in the future. But I do I do agree that the EPM community tends to be distinct or distinct enough, or at least the topics can be distinct enough to break them up. Yeah. Never seen we're also introducing a new track this year um, that we're calling Modern App Development. Um, so this is, um, you know, we, we have the Apex track and, and people within the Apex track and community are all building modern applications as well. Um, but they're using specifically Apex. That's, that's Oracle's offering. Um, and not everyone is building applications that way or are building applications that way. And so there are definitely other platforms and technologies that, that can work in the Oracle space um, or can work with an Oracle uh, database as a back end that we want to highlight and emphasize um, and bring more sort of opportunity for developers to, to explore, you know, sort of other uh, platforms and technologies, languages, et cetera, that they can, uh, you know, sort of expand their, uh, their breadth of their careers in. So we'll be offering this new track called Modern App Development, um, which will be a nice, nice complement to the Apex track. And that's that's distinct from Apex in that Apex is a specific toolkit. Right, because other... Apex is, is Oracle's, uh, you know, sort of offering with the database that uh, allows you to build very modern and robust uh, web-based applications, mobile applications, um, you know, all integrated within the Oracle database, but but some companies choose not to go that direction and, and they use other platforms and, and technologies to build their apps in. Um, and so we want to kind of showcase those uh, ways as well, because we've gotten some, some good feedback from both Oracle and as well as some of the attendees, um, you know, that this is an area that, that we should definitely be, be covering. So we wanted to dip our toe into that and see how it goes. And, and hopefully that grows into a, uh, you know, a, a nice enthusiastic group, just as the Apex community is. Very cool. It's back, back to the image of that person with the, the hood of the car open and wrenches in hand. Yep. Exactly. I love it. Um, okay, so abstracts are now open. Uh, uh, as of uh, the time of this recording, they're open, and as of the time that you're probably first listening to it, uh, they're they're still open for a little while longer. Um, so definitely, please submit your abstracts to speak at K Scope 20. We'd love to have you. Um, you know, perhaps uh, our next episode in this podcast series will put some. Uh, thoughts together around how to how to put a winning abstract together that sound sound like a good good topic that people would want to know about Chris absolutely absolutely and I think we have a lot of experience to offer them and and just more of this uh, transparency yeah I absolutely Chris thanks for uh, taking the time to do this with me tonight I appreciate it um, hopefully everybody listening got some uh, you know fun entertainment value out of this and and if you liked this episode we promise to make more so keep listening and hopefully you'll get a really good experience of what it's like to plan Kscope 20 so thanks everybody for listening thanks Chris for being on take care